Thank you very much. Um, good morning, late good morning to all of you. Um, I'm happy to be here and uh, uh, first time, first time in Myanmar and uh, it was overdue. And I met a lot of very nice people already. Uh, people tend to smile here. This is something we can learn in Germany. Uh, you know, so uh, thank you for the organizers to invite me here. It's, it's a pleasure. Uh, now, palm oil is the leader in the global oils and fat supply. I, I, I'm talking to you today about a success story. The success story of palm oil. And, and why is that? Why has palm oil production, palm oil exports, increased so sharply? And uh, what are the reasons behind uh, the, the fact that uh, palm oil today is used almost in every country, all over the place? And the world without palm oil would be a much different world. Uh, palm oil still has problems in partly in its image and of course the fires and the haze is not helping very much at the moment uh, but there are some very strong basic factors behind the strong growth in palm in palm oil production and, and here Myanmar I'm very sure is one of the countries which will follow this trend a little bit late, but with a big potential, a big potential in the years ahead for, I think it's basically imports, imports, party production of farm. Now, uh, mm -hmm. um, first of all, who is oil world? Now, we are following the market of oils and fats since 1958 we are generating the global import export production statistics we are we are we have built statistics on crushings for all countries in the world uh, so we are in a way leaders in uh, providing basic fundamental statistics and, and everything I'm going to present today are, of course, our data, our global data. Uh, we are independent. We are not keeping any positions in the market, nor do we have any physical ownership in the commodity. So we are totally independent. Uh, I try to cover, cover the... Uh, not only the palm oil fundamentals, but also the complete market. How is palm oil positioning itself in the global market of oils and fats? And, and, and I would like to explain you the relationship, the importance of palm and the rising importance of palm and what effect this is going to have on prices. And, and of course, uh, I would be happy uh, to answer any questions you, you may have. Um, look at this. The world market, world production of oils and fats. Of 17 oils and fats. Oops. Production, production has doubled. It is not working yet. Yeah, this small difference. Huh? Uh, production has doubled, more than doubled over the past 20 years. Very dramatic increase in production. You can see this. Um, something is something is wrong here. So, production has increased substantially, and farm oil. Palm oil has, I'm sorry, uh, 
Um, and palm oil has increased its market share to now 30%. Palm oil is the most dynamically growing oil in the market, followed by soybean oil and rapeseed oil. Uh, very clearly, uh, palm oil has grown much faster than any other oil. Uh, for 2013-14, we expect some slowing down of the growth in palm oil, um, but uh, the trend stays. Palm oil, palm oil production continues to rise faster than any other oil. Look at, look at uh, many of the oils which are almost flat, which are showing a relatively small growth. Palm oil today is a, a share in the world market of close to 60% of exports. And if we include palm kernel oil, it's even 63%. And it has a share of 30% in world production. Now we have to understand palm oil is, is, is one of the 17 oils and fats uh, and palm oil is in competition with seed oils. Uh, soybean oil, sunflower oil, rapeseed oil, which are derived from oil seeds. Now we have to look, we have to look also at the um, world production of oil seeds. And, and if you look at the red line here, dramatic increase in world production doubling, uh, doubling, more than doubling, over the past 25 years. Now, of course, the question is, can the world continue to provide these large quantities of oil seeds and vegetable oils in the years ahead? And it's a question of acreage. Um, land prices in many countries have doubled or trebled. Um, this has made production costs higher. This is one of the reasons for the higher price level we have. Still the question is, can we continue on this path? Can we provide, can we continue to provide the quantities the world market needs, additional quantities every year again? Now we have had two years of significant shortage significant shortage in oil seeds, primarily in soybeans. And here, palm oil came in, and palm oil was able to fill the supply gap created by soybean oil, for example. Uh, you see, soybeans are the most important oil seed, 57%. Rape seed, sunflower seed are the other dynamic seeds. Um, uh, but it's you know mainly these three seeds we have to look at. In soybeans, uh, there is a shift in the world with US production stagnating and South America having to take over. And here is where the world market becomes more and more dependent on. This is further growth in South American production. Now you have, a, you have a government in Argentina which is not at all supportive to the farmers. I mean, uh, I mean, it's the worst with an export tax, export tax, yeah, of 35 percent in soybeans, and with a with an official currency which is less than half of the black market rate, or at the, of the real rate. So, which is of course in, in, in uh, disfavor of the farmers. So you have developments now in Argentina where leased land contracts have been cancelled because big investment companies have started to go out of Argentina because of this unfortunate political environment, which you cannot change. Uh, beef producers are already chased out of the country, uh, and similar things could happen to the crushing industry, 
going, partly going to Paraguay, Uruguay, uh, or other countries, and as far as land lease contracts are concerned, as much as one million hectares have just been cancelled because of the unprofitable situation for farmers at the moment with a combination of declining prices and uh, unfair government treatment. So, so there is some, some uncertainty in the global market. Will South America continue and can, can South America continue to provide sufficient quantities in the world market in the years ahead without further dynamic growth in Argentina? One of the questions. Um, and, and here I want to show you uh, what palm oil did in the past two years. Look at the... Um, do we have a pointer here somewhere? One of them should be a pointer, right? Is this... Okay, by... Oh yeah, that's fine. Um, look here at the... Look here at the uh, palm oil increase. Palm oil production increased by three and a half million tons in the current season 12-13, while all the other oils um, declined. Production of all the other oils declined by almost two million tons. So palm oil saved the world in a way during the past 12 months. And this is actually what you can see in the, in, in, in the exports. Exports from Malaysia and Indonesia and South American countries, they're just exploding by 15, 16, 17 percent uh, over the past six months. And as a result of that, the burdensome palm oil stocks, which, which were still available in November, December last year, which reduced palm oil prices so much, these large stocks have been reduced by close to 2 million tons in Malaysia and Indonesia combined. This has helped, this has helped to stabilize the palm oil prices while soybean oil prices continue to decline. So, so the message here is palm oil filled the gap created by insufficient production of other oils, of seed oils, mainly of soybean oil, over the past 12 to 15 months. Oil seed production is now getting more ample. Very briefly, very briefly, um, with uh, global production in uh, 13, 14, up 21 million tons. World supplies of oil seeds are likely to rise by 27 million tons. So, uh, if weather cooperates, we think that the price outlook is bearish. Prices should move downward, mainly in the oil seeds and the oil meals, to a very small extent in the vegetable oils. Um, and I will come to this later. Uh, there is one major exception, and I want to point to this. This is the annual increases which we estimate for the oil seed production of the individual uh, countries. US, 8 million ton increase. Uh, but China, Chinese production of oil seeds will continue to decline. China, a country uh, with declining oil seed and grain area and declining oil seed production um, and the result of that is, of course, that China becomes the world leader, the world leader in oil seed and vegetable oil imports. Tremendous. And, you know, on top of this 62 million tons, uh, we are expecting another 8 to 10 million ton increase in Chinese imports in the next 12 months. Uh, so that's really a very important factor. China has increased imports of oils and fats, mainly of palm oil, uh, from 2.5 million tons uh, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, to 11, 
11.2, 11.4 million tons at the moment. The development in China, uh, or a similar development, occurred in India, and India is still in the stage of improving, it's still growing, a similar trend is likely to occur here in Myanmar. Not with these volumes, because you have a smaller population, but uh, if, if we look at your capita consumption, and with the government, if the government continues to open, you should see a considerable increase in vegetable oil, and I guess primarily palm oil imports, and I don't think that we have to wait long until you are importing 800,000 to a million tons a year uh, of vegetable oils, because you need it, and your population needs it, and I guess it's available. Um, very briefly, uh, how is the world market looking like? And uh, the driver always is the consumption side. The consumption. And, and I have looked, we have looked at the production. The production have more, has more than doubled over the past uh, uh, 20 years. And we get one explanation here on this slide. The combination of rising food demand, primarily in Asia, and rising bio-diesel production in the Western countries, primarily Europe, South America, and the US, this combination of the two, food and fuel, has doubled the annual growth rates in world consumption of oils and fats. And this is the red, uh, this is the blue part of the, of the slide. Um, the demand growth was as high as 63 million tons over the past 10 years. And 6.3 million tons on, on average per year. We needed more acres, considerably more acres, and higher yields to fulfill this. Um, that was a driving factor, and this was a major reason for the higher price level we have seen in the past five years. Now there is a big change, and, and, and the big change, which started in middle of 2012, is to be seen in a slowing down of the growth in the energy market, primarily in Europe. This is a major change, so we can say that the dynamics in the energy market is largely lost. We may stabilize, but I don't see much increase in European biodiesel consumption over the past few years, contrary to expectations. So this loss of growth in the European biodiesel market has an impact on the vegetable oil market and on the total complex oils, oil meals, oil seeds. So the oil values are getting a little bit lower and the meal value is higher because uh, of the relative weakening of the oil demand, of the vegetable oil demand. This was one of the reasons why palm oil prices and other vegetable oil prices were relatively weak over the past 12 months, contrary to oil meals. And it's a, it's a scenario which I think will stay also next year. Um, so most of the growth is for food, and we see some acceleration in food demand in palm, and also in Zoya, with prices having become more attractive for the consumer. There is some pent-up demand. Um, here you see in green the portion of, the portion of uh, energy demand. This seems to be small, but it is not small. It is 22 million tons. 22 million tons every year at the moment go into the energy market. 
This is really a lot, and this has moved prices. But the growth potential has deteriorated. Biodiesel production from zero to 24 million tons, and the annual growth is now slowing to probably a million tons, but it was three to four million ton growth a couple of years ago. Yeah? Um, so let us review as a summary briefly the supply demand outlook for the oils and fats industry because before I turn finally to palm oil. Um, a further good increase shaping up for oils and fats production in 2013-14. Um, production is likely to exceed consumption, the yellow part here, 13-14. Um, so we are building stocks. Um, we are building stocks uh, slightly, probably 0.5 to 1 million ton increase in oil stocks worldwide. And we are increasing seed stocks. Both are bearish. Stocks usage ratio is, is declining primarily in palm. And, and, and this is, I think this is important. Uh, I mentioned this before. The, the very burdensome stock situation in palm, which existed in November, December last year, has disappeared, has faded. It's, it's over for the time being because of somewhat lower than expected production in April, June. But we are at the beginning of a seasonal uptrend, so I think there's no reason to be concerned. It's just that the oversupply has been disposed of, has been consumed. Now, I said at the beginning that uh, the palm oil is a success story. And, and this slide is, is, an un, is an unusual slide. And I like it, because it is without any comparison. You see here, world production of palm oil doubling every 10 years. There is no other commodity where you can, well, probably laptops or something, you know, but not agricultural commodities. Doubling every 10 years. Uh, you know, and I just started in 1980. I think we can start a little bit earlier, uh, but here it becomes interesting. And it was quite easy at the beginning. But, you know, it even doubled from, from or more than doubled from 22 million tons in 2000 to 46 million tons in 2010. And the growth rate we have seen in the past two years are also exceptional. Yeah, and we produce today approximately 30% of world production of all oils and fats in palm oil, 30% on an area which is only 6% of the total oil seed area in the world. Big cost of yields. Yeah. And, and if we add palm kernel oil, it's even higher. Now, uh, drivers, what are the drivers? Low production cost, attractive margins, very attractive margins, and rising demand. And rising demand is probably the most important one of all. Because the demand drivers, at the end of the day, only created the attractive prices. It's a combination of both. Now we need 78 million tons, we think, at least, in the year 2020. So we may not continue to double. Because, hey, that becomes very difficult. Um, from this 46 million. I think we can't do it. And so it's going to slow down. Malaysia slows down because of insufficient acreage. Um, but 78 million tons is still a big target. And, and, and we need success stories 
also in countries outside Malaysia and Indonesia, like, for example, in African countries and in Central and South American countries, where a lot is being done at the moment uh, to expand palm oil production. And even here, as I, as I hear, so good success with your palm oil program. And, uh, and uh, I think everybody needs the best advisors. To, to prevent the to prevent the mistakes others have done, right? Uh, annual palm oil production. It's it's a it's a strong story. Now it looks like it looks like it's a trend line. Indonesia overtaking Malaysia, and and if it's you know, as if you can extrapolate, you cannot. You cannot extrapolate. And, and, and just look at the last three months, April, May, and again June, production in Malaysia is falling short of expectations. The yield potential of the palm trees have somewhat been reduced. Um, so it's not, it's not a, a, a boring extrapolation. These small changes, Monthly and quarterly changes, they make, in many cases, the price. And they create price volatility, uh, real uh, production as compared to expectations and stock changes. This is creating the volatility in our market. Okay? Prices, prices have bottomed in, uh, I, I think it was uh, December. We, we bottomed the, the crude palm oil price in December. We, we came back again in May, but, uh, but, but I think that, that was it. Uh, palm oil prices started to recover. Also the futures here on the Bosa Malaysia derivatives. Um, but down sharply uh, of one and a half years ago. A little bit longer, looking back since 72. What do you see? Fluctuations, extreme fluctuations. And you see that the average price level has moved upward. And, and I think this is mainly based on this additional demand from the biodiesel industry and the effects it had on land values, on production costs. Prices will stay higher because production costs today are considerably higher than they were 10 years ago. Considerably higher. Um, and you can see palm oil was offered at a at, at record price discounts, record price discounts relative to soybean oil uh, in Rotterdam of partly $300 uh, in the last couple of months. This discount has, however, narrowed uh, during the past three months. Um, palm oil has to be also seen in relation to the energy prices. And uh, in November, December, January, palm oil prices were at the price of Brent oil in Europe. Um, and, and this explains why we in Europe have considerably increased palm oil consumption during October, March. And, and a lot of your exports went to Europe for energy, <coughs> replacing soybean oil. So we have this typical mix in Europe now, rapeseed oil and palm oil, and very little or no soybean oil. So you replaced, you replaced soybean oil in the biodiesel industry. But this was only temporary. Um, the palm oil prices have moved above the crude mineral oil price over the past couple of weeks. Um, also, palm oil uh, has been more attractive than tallow. The tallow market in the world is tight, um, and, and palm oil fills the gap also here in uh, satisfying rising quantities, rising demand, which was previously satisfied by tallow. And as a result of that, we see palm oil consumption rates of 8% a year, which is a lot. 8% a year, um, probably falling back slightly in the next 12 months with the higher supplies of seed oils becoming available. 
Now, very clearly, global consumption of palm oil and palm kernel oil rising market share, very clearly. Exports, very clearly, palm oil is the dominant oil um, Malaysia, Indonesia, the drivers. Against and contrary to a shrinking world exports of soybean oil. Yeah? Now, soybean oil prices have become uh, more attractive now relative to palm. We have seen prices falling, um, falling down here, um, and, and, the, and the price premium of soybean oil narrowing to $140 from more than $300 uh, lately. Argentina is now in the market with, with uh, rising quantities, partly due to insufficient or reduced biodiesel production. So there's more coming from Argentina. Now, uh, look at this slide. It's palm oil, palm oil, palm oil. It's the dominant oil. And this is very, very likely to continue. The global dependence on palm oil is going to rise. Uh, the competitors, soybean rape and sunflower oil combined, they show very little growth. They cannot satisfy rising world demand. It's only palm oil. Therefore, your choice, your choice, and the choice of most consumers is palm oil because of availability and because of price. Um, the other oils, supplies of other oils are insufficient. Now, we do have, in the world market, we have only, basically, we only have two suppliers when it comes to oils and fats export. This is a little bit risky. This is a little bit risky for a consumer. Um, because Malaysia and Indonesia is, is in, 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 in the same region. Now, we, we didn't have El Nino for quite a while. Now, imagine we have another weather problem. I, imagine what happens to palm oil if we have a weather problem, if we have dryness for six months or so, which is not on the agenda yet. But hey, we have three years without El Nino. And, and we all know it's, it's relatively high time that, that we get some weather problem. Then, to rely on the supplies mainly of two countries for a consumer is risky. Uh, but this is a situation. This is a situation Argentina cannot follow up, Brazil cannot follow up, the U.S. needs more and more oil domestically. The U.S. even has become a net importer of oil supplies. So this is a situation where, where uh, the, world, the world largely satisfies its, in, its import requirement of oils and fats in South America. Uh, sorry, in, in, in uh, Indonesia and Malaysia. Now, concluding statements. Um, we believe that the global dependence on palm oil will continue to rise in the years ahead owing to insufficient production of other oils and fats. Palm oil has competitive advantages over other oils and fats. Much higher yields, lower production costs, requires less acres than soybeans or rapeseed, um, and has become increasingly attractive for consumers, also from the quality standpoint. Palm oil is generally priced at quite a sizable discount versus other oils, whether the producers like it or not, the palm oil producers. This has been the fact most of the time, and this makes sure that you get your market share and that, uh, that uh, the availabilities are being consumed. However, however, higher investments are necessary to raise oil palm plantings and yields to get ready for rising palm oil demand in the future. It is mainly the yield factor. Yields today are still considerably below potential. Now it is of course difficult to, 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 to bring in higher yielding varieties if you replant only every 20 years. 
Why in rapeseed you plant every year and you have new varieties every year. Now you have the higher, the better varieties only every 20 years if you replant. Now this replanting problem is also a growing problem and if this is not managed, it is also a reason for lower than potential yields. So this yield issue is a top, should be of top priority primarily in countries where the area is getting scarce. But this has to be done in a sustainable way and I think the RSPO has made groundwork in, in uh, showing how we can produce vegetable oil in a sustainable way, something which the soybean and rapeseed producers are not yet living up to. Uh, with this, uh, I give you my price forecast. Um, I expect that vegetable oil prices will fall to a four-year low in the next 12 months. And I look here at July, June 2013-14. Um, you know, uh, after, after peaking here, um, and again peaking in 2010-11, uh, we think the trend is still downward, um, probably until October, November. That's probably the time where we will see the lows in soybean oil and probably also the lows in palm oil. Um, so we go, we, we go lower from current levels, I think. Um, but for the whole season, only a relatively small decline in palm oil, um, but a quite considerable decline in uh, Argentine soybean oil to $980. So I'm just expecting a discount of $140 for Abidi Palm Oli in Fort Malaysia, just $140 here, which is relatively, relatively small. Uh, and, and I expect crude palm oil prices for the average of the next 12 months of 860 in Rotterdam, soybean oil 1050, and sunflower oil and rapeseed oil about at the same price. Sun oil supplies will become more ample. Um, so that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. I don't know whether we have time for questions, but thank you again.